So this video is a continuation of the last video that I have posted, the part 3 video where I had analyzed, uh, I had been analyzing this NAD type of questions and other problem that has been asked in bioprocessing engineering. So even though you didn't uh, work on those problem, at least, at least know what are the concepts by which they are asking. So after seeing the question paper, I had think the question paper is uh, uh, not that much tough friends because this question paper uh, with respect to gate biotechnology, you need to work out the previous uh, problems, it will be very much helpful. So without any delay, let's get into the this particular questions. So question number 16 is overall stoichiometry of anaerobic cell growth. They had given an overall stoichiometry reduction and they asked us to find what is an elemental composition formula for a biomass. Okay. So since in, in nitrogen is 1.67, 1.67, we, we can't able to, we, there is no need of calculating the elemental composition of nitrogen. We need to concentrate only on carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So this is what overall stoichiometry reaction, you need to take this particular thing and First, you need to calculate for this carbon and next you need to calculate for this oxygen. Okay, because nitrogen is everything is same. So, it's not going to give you any clue. So, uh, here we can find, we can say, first we can see for the carbon, next we can see for the oxygen. So, that's the thing I had given over here. First, we can concentrate only on carbon. LHS side, the carbon, total number of carbon is 6 into 3, that is 80. Okay, so there is no other carbon over here and RHS side here, 1.5 into A, A they didn't give, we need to find A, okay, and here there is CO2, C has a carbon, so 1 into 3, so there are 3 carbons has been given, so 18 carbons on LHS side and 3 plus uh, 1.5 into C carbon on RHS side, so we need to equate both the things, therefore 18 this 3 if it comes this side then minus 3, therefore 15 is equal to 1.5 into C, C is equal to 15 divided by 1.5 which is 10. So, here you can be able to see here C is 9, C is 9. So, you can just delete the options. This is not going to help us. So, you need to delete the option. So, both options are wrong. There is no need to look up for this particular options in future. So, only thing is that we need to work for other two options. Okay. So, these two options H is giving and O is also giving. In one option O is 5 and in another option O is 6. That is oxygen is 6. Now, we need to see only the oxygen. Okay. So, LHS side the total number of oxygen is 6318 and again this O2 is having, uh, O2 is having 2 oxygens. Therefore, 2 so, 18 plus 2 is 20 and in RHS side, there is again 1.5 into C, okay, 1.5 into O like that we can write and here in hydrogen, uh, in this particular carbon dioxide is also having 6, therefore 6 and hydrogen do have 1 oxygen, therefore 5. So, by equating on the both sides, here you will get 20 and here you will get 6 plus 5, 11. So, 20 minus 11, 9, okay, so oxygen is equal to 9 divided by 1.5. Okay, so oxygen is 6. So the correct option is option number D that is 610H22.33O6N1.69667. 20, yes, you can calculate for hydrogen the same, same way also, but there is no need to find already we had found. Next thing, for the few species, the slope of melting line is given. The difference between molar volumes is also been given. They are asking us to find what is the value of latent heat of fusion. Okay, so the formula to find the latent heat of fusion is that dP divided by dT is equal to L divided by T delta V. So, they had given slope of the melting line is given. So, you need to put that particular value. Okay, so this is 10 to the power of minus 6 and latent heat alone, we need to find the value of latent heat and T is given as minus 2 degree Celsius and delta V is also given that is the difference between molar volume of liquid and solid phase that the other difference which means delta C change in V that is volume. So, before entering into the solution, you need to convert the Celsius into Kelvin. The formula is 0 degree Celsius plus 273.15. So, the Celsius is minus 2 plus then the value in Kelvin is temperature is 271.15 Kelvin. So, you need to place all the value friends simply instead of this minus 2, you need to put this 271.5. Okay, since you need to convert the value of Celsius into Kelvin, okay, because here they had given slope of melting time in a per K. So, you need to convert them into Kelvin. If you didn't convert, then the whole process will be wrong. Okay, so you need to convert them, you need to 
uh, this uh, divider sign if it goes on the uh, lecture side it will be converted into multiplication sign at last the latent heat transfer is the value of latent heat fusion is 6189.99 if you round off the integer also 6189 and the next question is the for a double pipe exchanger the inside and outside heat transfer coefficients are given so the inside heat transfer coefficient is 100 and the outside heat transfer coefficient is 200 and the thickness is 1 centimeter and the thermal conductivity is thin they are asking us to find out the overall heat transfer coefficient which is again not a NET type of question which is a MCQ type of question the formula for finding out the uh, overall heat transfer is 1 by U plus 1 by H1 plus L by K plus 1 by H2. Where this H1 or H2 are inside heat transfer and H2 is the outside heat transfer. Whereas this L and K signifies the thickness and the thermal conductivity. They ask us to find this U. U what is mean by U? The overall heat transfer coefficient. So we need to put all the va values. So with respect to this thickness they are given in 1 centimeter where every every unit sorry meter. So you need to convert 1 centimeter into meter. So after converting you will get 0 0.01 meter. Okay. So you need to take a common thing that is LCM 2 plus 0 0.2 plus 1 divided by 200 which is 3.2 200 if you take ulta then it will go 1 by u will become u by 1 and 3.2 by 200 will become 200 by 3.2 so the value of the overall heat transfer is 62.5 so option number c that is 62.5 is the correct thing next thing is that the liquid phase liquid phase mass transfer coefficient that is kl is measured in a stirred tank vessel using a steady state method by sparging gas so here they are using dynamic gas technology and the oxygen uptake by the microorganism they had measured the oxygen uptake by microorganism and the bulk concentration of oxygen is 10 to the power of 4 minus 4 and the solubility of oxygen in water is 10 to the power of minus 3 if the oxygen consumption rate is 9 to 10 to the power of minus 4 and the interfacial area is 100, what is the value of KL? So, A means interfacial area, KL means liquid phase mass transfer and this Q0 says that oxygen consumption rate and CL determines a bulk concentration and the C0, C to the power of uh, Multiplication symbol says the solubility of oxygen. So the formula is oxygen consumption rate is equal to liquid phase mass transfer into C minus Cl. Where C is a solubility of oxygen and Cl is a bulk concentration of oxygen in the particular volume. So you need to apply all the values. So they had given an oxygen consumption rate as 9 to 10 to the power of minus 4. Which if we return symbolically means it will become 0 0.009. And this KL is we need to find. And this A is the uh, interfacial area which is 100 meter square divided by meter cube. And the C the bulk concentration sorry solubility of oxygen of uh, water is 10 to the power of 3 that I had it 10 to the power of minus 3 that I had written 0 0.001 and uh, the CL that is bulk concentration is 10 to the power of minus 4 which is 0 0.001 therefore you need to rearrange the equation and KL is equal to 0 0.01 meter per second where they are asking only in centimeter per second so you need to convert this meter per second into centimeter per second therefore at last the value of liquid phase mass transfer is 1. So for all the equation we are getting 1 as the thing I don't know at this point, time point many students will get confused even though they have given a correct answer. Next question is consider a piston cylinder assembly as shown in this big figure. Okay the walls of the cylinder are insulated and the cylinder contains 1 mole of ideal gas at 300 Kelvin and the piston is held initially at a portion of Z1 using a stopper. After the shop stopper has been removed and the piston suddenly rises against the atmospheric pressure they, they have given a value of atmosphere atmospheric pressure also that is 1.013 into 10 to power of 5 pascals. The new portion called Z2 where it is held by another stopper. Okay. The heat capacity that is Cv of a gas has been given and the cross sectional area of the cylinder has also been given. Assume the piston is weightless and frictionless. If Z2 minus Z1 is equal to 1 meter, they are asking us to find what is the final temperature of gas. So, this is the first law of thermodynamic with significance matter can neither be created nor be destroyed the value is q is equal to u plus w that is q is the internal heat and the w is the work done by the system we can also write the equation as q is equal to heat capacity into delta t plus work done by the system is equal to pressure into change in volume 
okay so the net heat transfer is constant then we can make this q as 0 therefore we can equate the reaction that is u is equal to w that is cv delta t is equal to p delta v cv they had given cv is nothing but heat capacity as 12.5 we need to put the 12.5 and delta t is equal to and they are also given a value of pressure that is atmospheric pressure is 1.0 sorry the value of pressure is 1.013 into 10 to the power of minus 5 into and the change in volume. Here they had given a change in volume. Sorry, the cross section area of cylinder is 10 to the power of minus 3. So you need to rearrange the equation and once you have rearranged all the equation then you will get 8.1. This is not a final temperature because initially the temperature was 300 and they are asking us only the final temperature. Initially the piston was killed at one portion whereas finally the piston was killed at another portion. So we need to mi minus that we need to subtract, subtract this 8.1 from the initial temperature that is 300 Kelvin which, which is the final temperature is the, the, the 292 Kelvin that is the final temperature of gas is 292 Kelvin. The last and the final question in this particular section is a pilot sterilization was carried out in a vessel containing 100 meter cube medium with the initial spore concentration is 10 to the power of 8 spores per ml. So initially the spore concentration was 10 to the power of 8 for 1 ml for 1 ml. The expected level of the aspect uh, as accepted level of contamination after sterilization is 1 spore in the entire vessel. The specific death rate constant for the spore, spore is 2 per minute and they are also given a temperature which is 121. Assume there is no death take place during a heating cycle and cooling cycle. The holding time at 121 degrees Celsius is what? They are asking us to find out the holding time at 125, sorry 121 degrees Celsius. So the formula is ln N0 divided by Nt that is initial value divided by final value and is equal to K into dt. Okay, so this is what they are asking us to the specific death rate constant is 2. Therefore, this KD determine the specific death rate constant and they ask us to find out this uh, holding time which is T. And this ln of N0 divided by Nt. So, N0 is 10 to the power of 16. So, for 1 ml, they are giving 10 to the power of 8 spore. For 2 ml, what is? Then you need to multiply with again 10 to the power of 8 which is 10 to the power of 8 plus 8 that is 10 to the power of 60. Okay, so you need to rearrange the equation. So once you have rearranged, the 16 will come before. So 16 ln 10 divided by 2. So you can cancel this 2, uh, 8 2s are 16. So 8 ln n, ln 10 value is 2.303. Therefore, 8 into 2.303, which is 18 minutes. So uh, uh, assuming that there is no death take place during the heating and cooling cycle, the holding temperature at 125 degrees Celsius is 18 minutes. So this is what, so... I have tried as much as to provide you entire details about any type of questions. Even though it is not with respect to this is our B-Tech B Biotech students only familiar about these things because uh, if we are a MSc Biotechnology then it is really hard to solve these questions friends. So better don't lose your heart if you had attempted any question as a wrong because there are many questions even though it is not a NAT or MC, MSQ. MCQ type of question also there are many problematic sums that also from bioprocess engineering so nearly 20 percentage of question has been asked from bio process even though every question in the 20 percentage is of problem type questions only so i have tried my best even though if you found anything as a hard please forgive me i can correct in upcoming videos thank you friends thanks for watching this